If you were to throw a ball, you wouldn't go straight into a one-piece takeaway. You're not going to take your arm away at the same time you move. You're not going to use a big transverse rotation. You're going to use frontal. This is a common issue that I see almost every day. And I think it's a misinterpretation because the one piece takeaway and the intention to take the club away with the rotation of the body could be stopping. In fact, it could be killing your sequencing. It's one of the biggest problems before the body even gets moving really that throws absolute spanners into the sequencing of the body. And it's one of the reasons why most people struggle sequencing before they really get going. Because they're so intent on methodically taking the club away and trying to keep the arms and the shoulders and the torso rotating together. And it plays havoc with the interaction of the body and the ground. Because most people come to me wanting to know about ground reaction forces and how do I use my lower body? And the moment they put a ball in front of themselves, they put the club behind the ball and they start to take it away very diligently, very focused, very deliberate really, in an attempt to keep everything online to prevent any potential unwanted slices and hooks. But in doing so, what they're doing completely unnoticeably is they're killing their action with the lower body. That foot ground interaction becomes so passive instead of driving the motion from the ground and using those forces to swing the club, they're actually taking the club away with their upper body and the lower body now just serves to support that movement very passively. So the pressure doesn't really move very dynamically. In fact, it's almost static. And then when we change direction or when we speed things up and wanna create some speed, we've already created problems at ground level and this has gone completely unnoticed and makes it almost impossible to recruit the ground now effectively to sequence the swing and create that speed that they wanted in the first place. So they may be able to control the swing to a degree where it's kind of keeping the ball in play but it's at the cost really of an effortless swing because it's very effortful because they're having to put all the effort in with the upper body that's where they're creating the power and not using that lower body, the bigger muscles, essentially the power muscles, the power joints to get the speed and the distance. So ultimately they can swing easier and sense the club better and have more awareness and control for what they're doing. So that's why this video is gonna be so important because what we need to understand is where these rotations come from. How do we actually make our backswing? How do we start this thing? How do we rotate? Now, contrary, to many beliefs and, and many lesson videos and books and magazines, the torso doesn't really rotate like this. That is an element of rotation, but we actually get rotation by allowing the rib cage to tilt, just like the pelvis. When you walk, one side of the pelvis tilts anterior, one posterior. The rib cage is doing the same thing. And what this creates is a rotation. So for example, if you watch this, if I hold my arms out like this, like I'm hugging someone. Hi guys, the GRF Travel Club is revisiting the Gloria Resort. We're in Turkey from the 10th to the 15th of March, four star venue, amazing courses, five nights, four days of coaching with myself and one of the GRF staff plus on the course with our GRF tour player, Mark Foster. We've got six places, guys. Follow the link in the description and we look forward to seeing you there. And maintain that shape and just rotate. This is what most people assume is rotation. And it is a form of rotation, but that's a lot of mass moving together and it's not really affording as much flexibility for adaptation. But if we start to use the spine and the rib cage, how they're designed for motion, then we can tap into these movements much easier and we can start to adapt our swing much more effortlessly. So rotation of the body looks like this. Notice as my right arm goes up and my left arm goes down, notice the zip curves, there's lateral flexion. And notice if I keep going, I've got rotation. So just by 
tilting the rib cage, the spine responds. And now I'm getting rotation. And then I could add a little bit of the earlier rotation, which is transverse rotation. This is frontal plane. And this is transverse. And we've got two simple exercises for you to tap into these. You might have seen this exercise in lots of lesson videos. This is the wrecking ball exercise. And this is for the frontal plane action. Lateral flexion with a blend of transverse. But it's predominantly frontal plane and this is how we need to start the swing. I'm going to use a GRF board and a GRF balance pad. We can use anything. You'll have seen kettlebells, you'll have seen medicine balls and they're all okay. The only thing I would suggest is that our arms should be hanging naturally. That's why I'm using a balance pad. Using a kettlebell puts us into a lot of internal rotation, protracts the shoulders and locks things out. We actually want to control movement ourselves. We want to be able to regulate the movement ourselves and not feel constrained, like we have to assume this position under tension to access this type of motion. We want to be relaxed. We want to feel the motion. And any necessary tension in is undertaken in a very natural, responsive way. So we're going to stand on the GRF board. I'm going to take the balance pad and hold it comfortably with my arms just hanging below my shoulders and ensuring that when I swing this, it's just going side to side with no excessive rounded motion. We want this to travel in a more vertical direction. So it really is a more frontal plane action. That's a side to side action, not a horizontal rotation, which is transverse. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna get swinging. Now, I've got the GRF board. You can make your own piece of wood on a golf club, on an old shaft, or a piece of dowel, or a broom handle, no problem at all. Grab something like a dinner plate, be careful, maybe a paper plate's better, but something like, something that's rounded like this, a frisbee, something like that, even a football, hanging down, arms are relaxed, no real lifting going on, forcing movements. We've got to take all that away. We've got to just rock. But what you might be doing is what I'm doing. And we don't want this. This is everything moving together and it's hard to recognize what's moving when and i'm not really transferring force to swing this balance pad the best way if i wanted to put more effort in it's the whole system and it's really effortful but if i start to disassociate the body movement from the swinging of the balance pad like this start again make a nice Rhythmical movement, rocking the board from side to side. Now keep the length of the swing the same. It's only pretty short, it's just outside my feet. Now I'm not gonna swing longer, but I'm gonna start to swing faster. And now my use of the board is disassociated from the swinging of the balance pad. We've broke the two movements up. It's no longer together. The use of the board goes first and then the pad reacts. Then we can start to soften it off and use this rhythm and start to accentuate the motion with our shoulders. And now you can start to see the wrecking ball. What I suggest you do is very quickly put that down while the feeling's fresh in your bones. Take your golf club, grip it lower down, just off the floor, make some swings. What you'll notice is this movement is very much a side to side using the wrecking ball motion. And this momentum has been driven from me using the ground, using the board, and then the body reacts and now the club reacts. What we can start to tap into now are the transverse rotations and these rotations are the big rotations. And this is the slingshot. So putting the club to one side, getting the balance pad back out, back on the GRF board, this time, instead of this being in a vertical place relative to my shoulders, we're now gonna lift it up so it's horizontal. So it's level or just below the shoulders, but just out in front is good because we want this to be a 90 degree action. And watch this now. This action is where the big rotations and the speed's gonna come from. And this is the slingshot. 
You can lower it a little bit to sternum height if you want. That's going to make life a bit easier. But essentially now we're isolating the big rotations of the body. These rotations, this transverse rotation, typically just gets used up straight away at the beginning of the takeaway and we lose the all-important stretch across the body. These joints just don't get actively stretched enough because we've used it up and now we're swinging with our arms. We need to tap into these big rotations because essentially now we get a greater displacement of the mass, we're getting a bigger rotation. We can actually start to create a lot more angular momentum using this motion and this is going to help create a reaction. It's going to help actively stretch the body for that very responsive and dynamic recoil. Whereas if we've used this up early in our takeaway, we don't get that stretch later on and therefore we're trying to somehow find these power sources. They've lost, we've lost that elastic recoil. We're trying to somehow recreate them from some other place in the body. And it typically just becomes an overuse of the upper body, the shoulders, the arms, the wrists, and we get those early releases, swings over the top and all the stuff that you hear about. Whereas if you use this transverse rotation later, you're going to be tapping into them at a much more advantageous time in your golf swing. So we've got to feel it first. Now what I suggest you do is start in your follow through. So for me as a right hander, I'm over here, board's tipped on my lead side. I'm going to rock the board back, swing, rock the board forward, swing. And this slingshot action is going to be critical to recognize as we get further into our backswing. So, how do we blend this together? Well, if I switch the board round here, we're going to start off in frontal plane. And it's not just frontal, there's a bit of transverse, but it's typically in our mind, we're just swinging side to side. And all we're doing in our mind is we're swinging side to side and then we're going to go horizontal. And suddenly now, as I'm swinging up, it's going from a predominantly frontal plane into a transverse. Got all this rotation here and stretch across the body at a moment in the swing when we want it. If I do it face on here, you're going to see me use that side to side motion and now it turns into a horizontal motion. And notice I've rocked back. This frontal plane really does encourage this lateral shift and this lateral shift quickly turns into rotation, turns into a push off the ground, an unweighting, and it turns into a reloading of the lead side. And now I'm on my lead side with all this rotation ready to use. So notice the downswing doesn't start here. At no point am I having to hold anything and shift across. I've actually already shifted to my lead side. So as the body is moving into a heavily transverse rotation, pressure's shifting to the lead side. So essentially, this is how we load those muscular chains for that stretch reflex, that active recoil. So we can push off the floor and fire these chains. Notice I'm holding this place. Now, I'm not a massive advocate of positions, and this is not a position as such. It's just you recognizing where you are in space, recognizing the form of your body and the tension, the load. We're on the left. As a right-hander, I'm on my lead side. I'm rotated, but it's not stacking. It's not the stack until we're not going straight here. That happens quite a lot. We've got to just let ourselves explore side to side. And then, once you've got that momentum here, now I can start to rotate and change direction. So what does this look like with a club in our hands? This is where the one, two, three comes in. Starting on your back foot, class that as zero, that's your start point. Then we're gonna go one, two, three. One and two are frontal. One, two. That's your frontal. One, two. So that's your wrecking ball. One, two, wrecking ball. Two to three is your slingshot. One, two, three. Okay. 
it's one of those, if you blink, you can miss it, okay? Because this is the time when we're introducing the impulse. Bang, we're loading to the floor as we load the body. One, two, three. And then you can feel this place. And you know where we're gonna be going from here, but I'm not gonna show you in this video because this is priming the system ready to go. We are using the ground now to unload, load, and then we can unload, and that's where we go vertical. But we've got to have these in place first to maximize our use of the ground. So guys, get yourself on a board. Use your one, two, three. If you're struggling for a balance pad or finding something, use a golf club, karate chop grip, that will do. So guys, wrecking ball to slingshot for power.